Hi, welcome to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Get ready to revitalize your mind, body, and soul. We're here to inspire women who are looking to break free from old patterns and ideas to create a life of increased confidence and improved health. Say goodbye to limiting beliefs and hello to new possibilities. So kick back, get ready to have some fun, and let's dive in. We'll uncover tools and insights that can help you build a life that's truly nourishing body and soul. Hi, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Tracy. And I'm Victoria. And we're glad that you're here. Happy Halloween. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, if you're watching, you can see that we are in our mad scientist costumes because, you know, we do talk about approaching things like a scientist and experimenting so yeah plus it's an easy yes. costume <laughs> i had a blue wig no no it has I nothing to do with that oh it doesn't have nothing to do, do with that yeah. nothing we dressed up just for you first <laughs> well, yeah, of we dressed up for them we didn't dress up for each other right <laughs> sorry <laughs> i dressed up for you oh <laughs> so speaking of dressing up this is a, a true confessions I know better than. And okay. this this goes back to, I'm not a person who has, that lives with a lot of regret because there are a lot of things just like, you know what? I did the best I could where it was and I've learned. This is one thing that I legitimately regret. And this is from high school. So I've been, this has been a long time. So my birthday is Halloween. Woo-hoo. Happy birthday. Um, and so when I was 16 years old, I was having a costume party. Mm-hmm. for Halloween oh. and uh, my mom had told you know okay you can have this many kids and I had this one friend who she wasn't a real close friend but she was just you know really nice and got along great and nothing but ever supportive to me and and uh, it was just you know she was a nice like second out friend you know oh I mean? yeah 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 it wasn't the inner circle um she was but, your outer onion but <laughs> oh, I like the yeah, paper yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> oh but bringing back to she food. was she was into Renaissance Fair, and so oh. and she had some great costumes. Mm-hmm. And so, my so thoughtless of sixteen-year-old self was like, "Oh, hey, I'm at a birthday party. Can I borrow a costume? Did I invite her? No, because oh. I'd already at the limit." She's like, "You didn't oh, invite her? Said, oh no." I legitimately had too many people coming. And yeah, I know. It's terrible. And I know. Did she feel bad? She's so nice. She never said anything. And I've never spoken to her about it. And, it, you know, thanked her profusely and took good care of the country. And I know it was just, it's it mortifies me to think how self-absorbed I was in that moment. And it was, I was completely 16-year-old self-absorption that I have never repeated anything like that. It has made me a much better person for sure. And it is just mortifies me to even say that. So I know so much better than that now. And I wish I knew better than that when I was 16. It was so thoughtless Aww. and so rude of me. And I didn't even realize it at the time. I think like this is was. enough. I think this is an like, I think you've confessed your sins to all of these people. I, w- I think you should forgive yourself for that. I wish I could talk to there her about it. Completely there are worse things than not being invited to a party. They really are. Yeah, when you're 16 and not being invited to a party, that can be a real, I mean, and I have no idea what it was like for her because not like the friendship ended. The friendship continued and and all of that, but you know, it could be one of those moments. I don't know. She okay. may not, I would hope she doesn't even remember, but. So I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to say know. something real okay. here. Maybe, maybe your party was not the be all end all goal oh. for everyone in school. No, I know that it wasn't, but the look on her face when I said, I'm having a party and her face lit up. Oh. Like, oh, yeah. So no, it wasn't the be all end all, but I know that she would have liked to be, would have been invited because of the look on her face. But so I'm sorry, I will mention no names, but um, if you have any watching and you know, I mean, you remember this thing to know who you are, and I'm very yeah. sorry. You, you don't if I were you, I'm glad you don't remember. If I were you in this moment, I would sing Let It Go. But my <laughs> my voice is not um musical theater voice. Well, so. it's one of those like, you know, let it go. I just you know, you have when you look back when you're a yeah. teenager, you go, Oh, I yeah. can't believe yeah. how stupid sure. it was then. And that's definitely one of those. Yeah. And it landed on somebody else. So yeah. I know better than that now. Yes. All right. Well, good. 
Yeah. Let it go. Okay. Let it go. Your party was not like, <laughs> I mean, unless you all got translated or <laughs> taken up in like a spaceship with our alien friend back there. No. Like everyone survived. Everyone survived. Most of the high school survived without going. Yeah. 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 Very I'm true. just saying. Very true. If you want to put it into it. <laughs> okay. So there's that. So I don't really have like a ton of bad costumes that are, I don't, here's my Halloween problems. Okay. My Halloween problems stem from working at like tech companies, but especially at the animation school, because at the animation school, we went all out for oh. Halloween. If you can imagine, like someone came dressed as the blue man with the blue man, like looked exactly like him you're part like, of the group it got to the point where people wore their their costumes their day costumes for like the day and then like dressed like dressed up into like i just remember like somebody did like a 19 like maybe around 1910 circus and so they put up like an old timey circus tent and and then they had like you and it was very clicky because you would get your group of friends to all dress mm -hmm. up yeah. yeah and so they had like a circus tent and then people came all dressed exactly make up everything as if they were from like a 1910 circus like you would see wow. and you know like one of those things and people juggle and all kinds of things so that's at somebody's house or that's at work no that's at work yes oh, goodness oh yeah that's at work Wow. Like the best thing I did is I, I came like our group came as pirates. Mm -hmm. And so that was it. So my howling costumes are, I'm sorry, I'm really, really sick. I'm sorry. I can't come to work today. I'm sorry. But because it was so much pressure. And you could go down to the costume <laughs> store and just buy something because that was like no creativity you had to somehow sew something and then come up and then you had to get your friends to like <laughs> together to come up with stuff and it's just you know there was like groups of people who were very very good and loved Halloween and they would start planning in September like early September for Halloween and like got stuff together but I was never part of one of those groups so and yeah, that's because you got sick of free Halloween. Yes, <laughs> like like I came up with the idea for um the Jersey Shore. Do you remember Jersey uh -huh. Shore? That was this is long the time ago. This shows how long ago it was. Anyway, yeah, and so like everybody wore their chains and they, you know, I got guys, whatever. Did I go? No, <laughs> no, no, because so that's mine. Mine is like one of like serious avoidance. <laughs> It, I was, you know, it was fine the first couple of years, but I was there. We think it was relatively normal people. But then it just got, it just ballooned into here's our day costume that we come and work in. And then here's our costume where we transform ourselves and the entire workspace that we live in. <laughs> and I know that probably sounds lovely and wonderful, but it's a lot of pressure. And I didn't Especially know. Especially for a perfectionist. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no, yeah. I just wished I could have gone down to this store. Like in my head, I always had, you know, when I was going to be Sailor Moon once, you know that, the anime girl. Mm -hmm. Well, I went down to get a costume and I don't know if y'all have gone to get costumes lately at the costume stores. Do you have the you? The prices you mean? Is that where you want? Or the... Like how sleazy is that? Yeah. Normal Sailor Moon, but maybe there wasn't a normal Sailor Moon. Maybe there only is a sleazy Sailor Moon. But anyway, I thought it was anime. I thought, well, that's cool enough for everybody. Whatever. <laughs> but no, I went down there. It was like a sleazy one. It was a time. I have like that was like three days before. I didn't have time to like sew my own. There's a whole song in the Mean Girls musical about sleazy halloween costume oh my gosh you could be a sleazy this a sleazy that. you really could sleazy sleazy with bun bun rbg mm -hmm. bun ginsburg 
it's like you mean everything like this song it's a pretty funny song it's sadly it's one of those sadly true comments on our society but yeah yes. it's humor yeah so anyway so that so how we so that's a, an avoidance so yeah. that's my bad my bad is me being in bed <laughs> going like i'm sorry i don't get to see all the exciting things i'll we'll look at the pictures later <laughs> yeah nobody cut on that you were sick every halloween i think they did by the last <laughs> although yeah i did go once as um the plumber i don't know if you remember with this with it's a political it was a political thing with sarah palin and there was a plumber like plumber joe or something like that I remember that whatever i can't even remember his name but it was a plumber and i was like bald cap <laughs> t-shirt and like some plumber equipment. There you go. And so I went as that. And no one recognized me because I had a ball, ball cap, cap on. <laughs> yeah, it was the easiest costume. And <laughs> one of my friends towards the end was like, please. He's like, please take it off. He's like, you are so, so ugly as a bald man. <laughs> He's like, please take it off. Like, I love it. No, they are good. It leaves me alone. Yeah, it's so rrr, ball you know, humbug Halloween. So there's your dating tip. If you ever yeah. want somebody to leave you alone, just put on a ball cap. A ball cap. <laughs> Yeah, if you ever feel like going to a like a upscale bar and getting it, or sorry, the church social and not getting hit on. You get hit on so much at the church social. Maybe some church socials, but not ours. But anyway, bald so, cap's the way to go. There you go. Although, you know, you're always gonna find people who are into something. Well, you know, you can easily cross them off your list. So yeah. All right. Uh, anyway. So that's Halloween okay so today we're talking about how to deal with halloween what's your best costume <laughs> my best costume was probably that one that i borrowed from her because it was a great oh, wrestling great on me i bet that was a good costume but mine I, we did no see i did when i was a kid we were the you know your halloween bag is a pillowcase mm -hmm. and you just i mean I, it was news to me that people made or bought costumes because we always mm. put them together i thought this just you know Maybe it's the time just that I around. Around. Yeah, I mean, my dad was in the military, so we do that. We did um, back, we called them hobo costumes, you know, put oh, makeup yeah. on her face. And, mm -hmm. um, so what, it was just, it was very fun. It was just uh, kind of, you know, what we put together kind of stuff. Yeah. So that was fun, but it wasn't ever any like, oh, we did this or that. It was just like, put it together and take a pillowcase and go have fun. Yeah, mine was Princess Leia. <laughs> but like Princess Leia probably in 1970 something so pretty soon after it came out and my mom made a costume that looked exactly like Prince mm -hmm. Alea and then she made this wig out of like yarn and she somehow made it so it had like two the buns the buns the on, there. Roll on there it was yeah uh -huh. it was fabulous I felt very much like Princess uh -huh. Leia like I could slay the world <laughs> in that costume so anyway that was my favorite so fun yeah fun okay so how do we deal with halloween and we're talking particularly yes. we're not talking about the you know ins and outs of the excuse me while i grew my <laughs> blue hair <laughs> um, is food wise food wise what do we do food wise because there's all kind of all kind of candy everywhere um yeah what? well i think it's a good time to talk about like a little bit more in depth about how you got to your three M and M's. Well, that's what we will. Thing. We'll come. We'll come oh, we talk, are. Yeah, we'll oh, talk okay. about that because um, well, I'm going to take an approach, like two different approaches oh, okay. here. What okay. do we do about? And you know, really, it's a lot of it's a lot of sugar and a lot of sweets. But there's also, you know, if you're going to Halloween parties, they're going to have. There's just going to be lots of food. And coming into the other holidays following, there's just a lot of food around, and so first thing to do is just really to like kind of assess where you are because the first thing we're going to talk about um is like lower level step a kind of stuff it's the i'm just gonna come up with some kind of strategy to like white knuckle it and get through this and when we were talking is that intuitive this, no, no, no. But this is, it's like, it's where to start though. If oh, you're okay. not ready, if you're not ready to kind of, you know, to be do all, do all the, the work that it takes to really 
like deal once and for all. Mm -hmm. That's, that's okay. If that's where you are, if you're just like, I just got to get through this. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't have the wherewithal right now to really address the whole bottom line, have peace and happiness here ever after. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. So when we were talking about this before, Victoria's like, well, we just don't buy candy. So, well, we don't, I mean, like where we live, we live in a place that people don't like trick or treat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if we bought candy, we would just be eating it. So, but that sounded exactly like my mom. That sounded like a quote word (laughs) for word. If we bought candy, we would just be eating it. That sounds just exactly like my mom. But there are people who are in a place where they will, um, the games that we play with ourselves, well, you know, but what if we do have somebody? We'll just buy it to have it here just in mm-hmm. case. Mm-hmm. Or I have this, you know, for people who are churchgoers, a lot of churches have activities around Halloween. It's like, I'll just, I'll just buy it for that if I decide for if I decide to go. And then, you know, end up just I won't even open it until Halloween, or I won't even open it until the church mm-hmm. activity or whatever other activity, mm-hmm. community activity or whatever. Um, and this is right now for people who don't have children. Um, then it's if you want to just say I'm not going to buy candy and that's how I'm going to deal with it and just you know remove that from that from me um, then okay okay that's not doing anything to address the problem that we, we may have with it but that it's a, sometimes avoidance is, is fine it's a fine place to start um, so there's that but you if you're not trust. in a position just worth where you can just not buy candy because you have, you know, children or grandchildren or community members, neighbors that come to your house and you don't want to be in the house that's dark on the street or mm-hmm. whatever. If you're if you're just in a position where you know candy is going to be part of your life during this this time of year, um, then you do. Here's a little pro tip that I'm sure you know, but if you are in a place where you're still going, oh well, but and playing games with yourself. You, they still sell Halloween candy on October 30th. They even still sell it the morning of the 31st. So you can just legitimately not have it in your house until that time. And then the uh, limit. So just yeah, get it. Right. Like that Buy it on the 30th. You can get it the day after. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't do anything for the trick-or-treaters. Oh. <laughs> you have trick-or-treaters come to your house. Yeah. You have to go to where you're bringing candy. Um, you just buy it last minute. That's fine especially if you're a person who likes to prepare you feel no obligation to prepare for this if having it in your house is going to be a problem because the um one of the other things we do is like oh no i'll get it but i just won't open it and then that just sets us up for well yeah i just won you yeah know? And then we go down, we set these limits, we we make these rules for ourselves. Yes. Of this. Yes. And then I do this all the time. If that's that's not candy, but yeah, yeah, all kinds of things. And so we set these rules. And that is it's not getting at the core issue. But if that's where you are right now, that's okay. However, the problem with that is that too often we end up then opening the bag to just have one. And the next thing we know, we know the end of this story. Yeah. We're going to the you store. break the rules yeah, and then you feel guilty. Right. And, and then you, you feel, feel ashamed. Guilty. And then you just have to go buy more. And it's like, oh, I knew that. Why can't I do that? And so if you're going to set limits for yourself, please just set them. If it's something that you can realistically do, and it's okay if you can't have a bag of candy in house and open it. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So just because if you're setting limits that you're really well-intentioned about, but your history and you really know yourself and listen to the skeptical part of yourself and it's like you know you're just going to eat that then yeah just don't set yourself up for that mm-hmm. because you're just really giving yourself a reason to beat yourself up and that's never a good plan yeah never a good plan yeah so so those are the that's the like little, yeah because then there's guilt kind of and thing. shame and all of that mm-hmm. yeah and that's so good for your health yeah mental and physical and emotional it's yeah so it's just so okay there's just eliminate the temptation altogether right eliminate the temptation buy it super late if you have to buy it or if you feel like you're going to set rules for yourself set them but only set them if you 
Mm -hmm. It's actually something that you might stick to, not that you will stick to, because you don't want to be real with yourself and you don't want to give yourself another reason to feel guilt or shame and like a failure. So, yes. and it's okay. It's, oh, I mean, it's totally okay if you are in a spot where, and right now we're talking about candy, but again, any, any other foods or things like that, it's okay to be in a place where you can't handle that because there's something that brought you to that place. There's a reason why you're there and it's okay. So recognize it. And that's the first step to be able to move past it. So if you're in a place where you want to actually like do something long-term about this, um, then these are the real things that I would advocate. Okay. And this is where the, it's the kind of thing where, um, <laughs> It's, we'll talk about how I got to the point where I can be satisfied five by three m ms And also we've talked about that a few times. Let's be clear. Every time you eat an m I'm not only having three, <laughs> but. Well, I'm like a little obsessed with your three <laughs> m ms Her ability to have three m ms I never would have thought of it myself because again, my birthday's Halloween. I have this very intimate relationship with candy on so oh, many levels. Yeah. On yeah. so many levels. I know. That, you know, the thought of me ever, ever coming to a point where I could have three MMs and be happy, I would have thought, that's just weird. And I have no desire ever to get to that point. And right, like that's even humanly possible. So, but you are so, going to enlighten us. Yeah, well, and it's Dr. Ashworth. <laughs> Thank scientist, you. Scientist, scientist. Sorry, uh, doctor, doctor. Oh, doctor. Okay. I okay. called you doctor, but I also, <laughs> also. <laughs> bow. I don't know. It was my namaste. namaste. Like, I, I'm like recognizing her spiritually. <laughs> the Zen of candy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the Zen of candy. Go. So, well, I like it. First go. of all. The first thing, and we'll start from the outside in, of the packaging that they put the candy in. It's so cute. It is cute. It's so cute. And it makes it so much even harder to resist. Um, and this is one good thing that came from going to Weight Watchers for me, because that I still remember my Weight Watchers leader saying, just remind yourself, there will be a minor swear word coming up. So if you don't want to hear swearing, cover your ears. <laughs> just, just remind yourself, it's still the same damn candy. <laughs> I still hear her voice oh. say that. And that's just really true. true. And it can take away some of the power that it has. Yeah. Just going, you know what? Snickers, you are adorable when you're dressed up like this, but you're still and Snickers. And they're like little, yeah. Yeah. When they're looking all cute. Green and, and purple. And, and, yeah. 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 Yeah, so it's still it's still the same Kit Kat inside of there. It's still <laughs> it, it's it, it's still it, the it's, same M and M, no matter what color it is. Still the same M and M. Yeah, and so the you know just look at the packaging. And go, oh, this is marketing manipulation. I don't want to be manipulated, and we can appreciate the cute packaging without letting it draw us to the, the candy. Yeah, like that really is adorable. I appreciate what they've done here because it is super cute. Still don't want it. Yeah. So there's that. Starting with the packaging, just remind yourself, it's not any different. You can buy that same candy every freaking day of the year, every day. So it's not anything that you need to get just for Halloween because that cute packaging doesn't make it taste any better. Mm -mm. Doesn't. So there's that. Yeah. Well, um, kind of. What do you mean? It does make it taste better a little bit. It, no, the taste is, it makes it more enjoyable. Yes. Yes, but the taste. Well, no, the taste is the, no, no. about that. The, the taste is the same, but yeah. it is like the oh, that's a super fun and cute. Yeah, it just does make it enjoyable. But we yes. can enjoy it. We can enjoy the look of it. Yes, without having to eat it. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a thing. Um, okay, but the biggest thing is kind of a two goes hand in hand here. Giving yourself permission. Like that whole good food, bad food list thing again. Giving your taking away that food rule as like this candy is bad, and I'm a bad person if I eat it. Yeah, moral right. Giving it a moral right. moral right. score. So taking that away and just going, it's just a food. It's just something to put in my mouth and chew and swallow. That's that's what this is. 
and looking at it that simply, and then giving yourself permission, really, and this is really, this is so much easier said than done, that really legitimately giving ourselves permission to eat that food. Yeah. And when we do that, when we take away the guilt and the shame ahead of time, mm -hmm. then, and really give ourselves that permission, then that's when we can just go, oh, okay. If I am, well, if I'm eating M&Ms and I haven't given myself that permission and I think I shouldn't be eating them because they're not good food and da, 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 all, all of the things, all of the lists, all the reasons, all the rules, if I'm that mindset about the M&Ms, but I'm eating them anyway, I'm not going to enjoy them. There may be the momentary, oh, but I'm going to eat them a lot faster because I'm ashamed of what I'm doing. So I just need to hurry up and be done with this dirty deed and uh -huh. get it be over with, which is never over with that fast because there's the residual things going on in our head. Um, but also we're not really experiencing that food. We're, we may think we are, but we're not really experiencing it. So the, if giving ourselves permission and that looks like principally to start with have going through the motions of, um, slow down, slow down. I'm going to have this fill in the blank, whatever your weakness food is, your Gary Deli squares, um, slow down, take the time. Look at the packaging. It's cute. Enjoy just the packaging. If you still want to go further and go, you know, I really do want that chocolate that's inside. Open it up. Smell it. Just take it. Don't even take a bite. Don't rip it open. Shove it in your mouth. Uh, smell it. Because that's a big, that's a big, big indicator. Uh, I mean, it's just a very satisfying thing about food. That's why when we have a cold or whatever, for some reason, our sense of smell isn't what it is. Food is some sort of appealing. Mm -hmm. So that's really a big part of the satisfaction of the food is the smell of it. Um, and then look at it. These foods, most of them are designed to be really cute, especially these holiday ones, because they take it and they put it in the shape of, of a little ghosty, or they put it in the shape of a little Santa Claus or whatever. They change it. So appreciate their work. You know, this is how they design it. Appreciate the work. Slow down. Take, look at it. Smell it. Experience it that way before you ever even put it in your mouth. And then once you do, instead of like, once you do put it in your mouth, instead of just shoving it all in, I mean, yes, if it's an M&M, &M, put it in your mouth the whole thing at once. But even the like the little fun size Snickers or whatever the fun size candy, you don't have to eat it all in one bite. And you don't even have to put it in and start chewing immediately. Put it in, let it, let your mouth experience it. Think about what it feels like. What's the texture of it? That's the thing. These foods are scientifically engineered to have certain mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Mouthfeel is one of the things that they test for and one of the things that they play with in their recipes. Um, so the good, thing with doing, the good thing with doing that too is if you've eaten real, really good chocolate mm -hmm. and you're eating whatever's coming out of the dollar bag, mm -hmm. whatever, it, I yeah. don't know what it is, but you can put something in your mouth and go, oh wait, this isn't worth it. Like, yeah, this isn't worth the calories. This isn't worth the grief. This isn't, you know, yeah. this isn't some like fine, you know, this is not a lovely shark. experience. Yeah. This isn't like Velrona chocolate or some, you know, amazing thing mm -hmm. that sometimes helps yeah. me because there's yeah. a lot of candy that you get at the grocery store. I'll taste it. I'll be like, it's not worth it. Not when I can be eating something like so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Might be more expensive, but like. For a little bar but yeah the satisfaction level yeah. is completely different yeah completely so. different yeah and that will automatically too um have an effect on how much of it we're eating yeah because if it's something that we're really enjoying then that when we're taking our time with it it's not going to take that it's not going to take a whole bag of something to satisfy us is we're going to reach our satisfaction we're going to be satiated for that satisfaction mm -hmm. much sooner for yeah. me, doing this with M&M's happened to be three M&M's. Yeah. Um, one Ghirardelli square. Oh, man. Slow down, savor that. One is sometimes even more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the really taking time to appreciate. And 
the reverse side of that is if it's not good, if it's not something that, um, like you can tell in the mouthfeel, it's not, right, right. it's not good chocolate. It's yeah. not melting the way like a yeah. really good chocolate will do. Yeah. Yeah. And so then it's like this, then we have time to realize this isn't satisfying. And no matter how much of this I eat, I'm not going to be satisfied. Because that's the thing. Like I'll sometimes eat something and I'm like, this isn't that good, yeah. but it's here and it's sugar and it's your know, chocolate ish. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's one of those ones that like make it taste like chocolate. It's not yeah. really <laughs> And I'll eat like chocolate like dessert <laughs> yeah, until they're gone. And I'm like, that isn't even really what I wanted to eat. Yeah. Like now I really want to eat some chocolate because that yeah. was like not yeah, satisfying. Not satisfying. So then I've eaten a whole bag and now I'm searching for a good chocolate bar somewhere. And if we're, if we're eating very, with like all of our senses that we possibly can engage with this experience, then we're not likely to get through the whole bag of the stuff that's, but you know, there's some, sometimes if you're not paying attention, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're slowing down and you're paying attention and you're using all of your senses, then you're not you're it's automatically going to control how much of it you have um now that being said it's this is most of the time is going to lead us to better quality food however there are some foods that have such a strong emotional attachment that it doesn't matter that there's really like not any nutritional value in an m&m i'm still i'm not i don't think i'll ever get to the point where i'm never going to have another m&m until well when i'm dead i probably won't but prior to that there's always going to be a chance that I will put an M&M in my mouth. No, <laughs> what goes on in heaven? No idea. There's probably people who invented M&M are up there now making like heavenly M&Ms. That could be. You can go to the heavenly M&M candy store. And guess what? M&Ms on clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I got all excited there. Like a really fine M&M. There you go. <laughs> but it's, it, they would still be worth it because of the connection or just like you know some for me like sometimes like i just want i don't want a good quality pizza i want a bad pizza mm-hmm. but i want a cheap pizza and normally it's like that happens every once in a great while and i'll have one slice or maybe two it's like okay i'm good now for another four years yeah <laughs> yeah so, so but every now and then it's still it's just because you're doing this doesn't mean you're never going to want something again it mm-hmm. might but it might not and that's okay too um and so then going on from this, so appreciating it with all of our senses, giving ourselves permission, and then um, slowing down and savoring it, like we talked about, but then also de- detecting our body cues, really like paying attention to our body um, and listening for, okay, what kind of hunger is this? Why am I eating this? <laughs> Um, no idea what's going on there this, uh, God, i just paid attention to my body sorry <laughs> i've been getting well <laughs> carry on <laughs> so just the listening to our body and and then you know pain it will get those hunger cues and those fullness cues and we'll be able to detect what kind of hunger it is if it's actually legitimate hunger or if it's just you know, a craving or if it's boredom or whatever it is. So paying attention to our body cues really helps with that too. But also not just our body cues, but our, our cues from our brain and noticing where we are emotionally. Are we eating this? Is there some kind of guilt that's going with everything, that every bite we're putting in our mouth? Is there some kind of shame that we're getting? Is there some kind of like forbidden something that we are not building ourselves up and strengthening ourselves emotionally we're turning ourselves down paying attention to those cues and then just questioning as we're doing that so is this really worth that you know is this whatever i'm eating is it worth that feeling is it worth that consequence or is it covering up some feeling yeah yeah like numbing you right and recognizing that you know ultimately like lately i don't know what's been going on but it's like I have been, I just, I probably just have had so much going on lately and so many different balls in the air that I've just been craving chocolate so much more than usual, but it's at this point I can usually go, it's okay, but is chocolate really going to take care of whatever this is that I'm feeling this that's gnawing at me. And now, fortunately, most of the, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, the presence of mind to go, but is that going to feel this is that going to take care of this is that gonna or is it just gonna numb it and make it go away for five minutes you know yeah 
Um, and so that's you know that question to ask as well. And then when we do have that, to get really curious, you know, put on your lab coats and get curious. Why are you so attached? Where's that attachment coming from? And start looking, you know, exploring that way. And wait, why are you attached to this kind, this particular candy, or this amount okay. of candy, or this? You know, if you come from a household where candy was forbidden, mm -hmm. those oh. these are the kids that go to their friends' houses and they cannot stop eating. Yeah, and so and that transfers over to when we're adults too. It's like so, when we have the wherewithal to purchase our own candy, mm -hmm. and our parents are not going to be there telling us we shouldn't eat it, mm -hmm. that's that's when we're much more likely to just gorge ourselves. And so looking at the attachment, why am I attached? It's not that I'm attached to this. I'm attached to the power that I feel. Mm, the power. Yeah. Because I'm the one who's in control. I'm not being oh. told I can't. It's my decision. I was never allowed to make this decision. And so now we transfer that to not that what I want is the decision. It's mm -hmm. like, well, I was always told I could not have this and it was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm going to prove to you that I can then, then we think it's about the candy, but what it's about is about the choice yeah, and the power and the control over our own decision. So, yeah. or even like sentimental attachments. Right. Right. So like pumpkin bread, my mom makes mm -hmm. pumpkin bread this time of year. Could mm -hmm. she get pumpkin, canned pumpkins anytime? Can, of course she could. Mm -hmm. And we could have pumpkin bread in April. Have yeah. I ever had pumpkin bread in April? No. So what it is, not is it season. means, so my birthday is coming up too. Mm -hmm. So like, it means, oh, it's my birthday. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, you know, oh, it's um, Halloween. Cause mm -hmm. even though we don't have candy around, there's like still things mm -hmm. being made, which usually pumpkin bread. And it's just like happy times mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that. So that when I, when I taste pumpkin bread, it's like, you know, like, yeah, it's complete. It like fills oh, your heart yay, yay. not just your belly yeah yeah, yeah. like the warm spices yeah. and the whole thing just yeah. make me feel like oh this is a happy time I don't need to like worry about anything and it's a good masking mm -hmm. it's a good masking uh, food because yes. if there is anything I'm worried about or concerned about I can have pumpkin bread and, and that goes away yeah and it all goes away yeah for a while while I yeah my body takes in the yeah. sugar and that's where we get curious we go why you know okay what is this pumpkin bread doing for me and recognizing oh i have this really strong emotional attachment to it and that's a beautiful thing that's a beautiful thing to have that kind of attachment to food which is why i'm a little bit um i sometimes get a little prickly when people talk about being emotional eaters because if you're presenting emotional eating is always a bad thing then that means you need to take emotions out of eating and nope that's not a life that's not a life to have um, because we want these attachments are beautiful things. I don't even know but if you then, could take emotions out of yeah, eating food. I know. I don't either. But have, looking again, lab coat, go, okay. Yes, this pumpkin bread fills me up in so many ways, emotional and mental. And it's not about what it's, you know, not about filling my tummy here. Um, but then when we we're in that mindset and realizing that, okay, that's why I'm eating it. And it's okay to eat it for that reason then we can have, we can just slow down and we can really appreciate it. And we end up having one slice of pumpkin bread or two instead of one or two loaves. Of yeah. Pumpkin bread. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because my mom like little loaves because she's taking yeah. them to people. Yeah. Yeah. I can eat one of those in a night. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Just keep going back. Yeah. And yeah. feeling guilty. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's no guilt involved in it. Yeah. There's still guilt involved in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then, yeah. So that then comes back to the giving yourself permission. This is mm -hmm. a perfectly fine thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have to kind of sneak a slice every time we go by. The next thing we know, the loaf is gone. So, so I, I should, what should I do? Should I just like take the loaf? No. Put no, it no. on my, like, like the table next to where I'm working and just like eat it. No, because take the whole loaf. If you're doing that, <laughs> I've you're never doing tried that. You're that. probably not eating very mindfully. You're probably no. not using your senses to <laughs> experience that <laughs> oh. and you just go I'm just gonna take this you know this minute and I'm gonna totally bask in this one one slice of this pumpkin bread and I'm gonna let it fill me up in all the areas it fills me up in and mm. just think about how much I love my mom and how much my mom loves me and how good this tastes and it's like time of and, year yeah and, uh, and just let yourself let yourself go there it's really my own version there. of pumpkin spice 
lock okay. <laughs> right that didn't even come that, out of my that mouth that didn't even come out of my That's mouth your, well you tell me order of, that <laughs> it's your version of pumpkin spice being pumpkin spice ball yeah <laughs> um and then with all of this if you do have children around in your life um trying to you know taking the opportunity to help them with this help them notice their own body cues help you know if you're gonna my grandkids huh, some of my grandkids the ones that i know specifically about this um they love to go trick-or-treating mm -hmm. and then their candy just sits there they're Aww. not candy kids but their mother was raised in a home where it was the it, there wasn't that attachment mm -hmm. it was like yeah it's okay and so because of that, they can take it or leave it. It's not, they don't have that, oh, we only get this Halloween candy once yeah. a year. So we need to eat it all right now. And we, this is the one time a year that we can, we're allowed to just take our pillowcase and stuff our faces. It's, mm -hmm. they have never had that because they've never needed to. Mm -hmm. And so they can, well, that's I good. mean, and I've, I've probably happened more than once, but one year I know specifically, they ran out of candy at their house. They have a um, you know neighborhood where they get several kids. They ran out of candy and their kids were very happy to go, oh, we'll just use mine. And, oh wow yeah they just like dressing up and going out and having that experience and that's the next thing on this of, of the next part of this is taking the time to focus on everything else that you enjoy about the holiday is the it's like is what i enjoy about this holiday having the the kit kat in the cute wrapper is that really what i like about this holiday probably not no what you probably like about the holiday is, you know, if you enjoy dressing up or, you know, the fun the memories from when you were a kid and the, you know, how all the cute, adorable children come to the doorstep or the, you know, the fun, how the adults get crazy and they have a good time and, you know, it's whatever. Is that your good time, voice? <laughs> the adults get crazy. That's good time. <laughs> oh, like your good time voice. Okay, go ahead. Good to know. Good to know. You can see what's happening to Tracy on her birthday. <laughs> so, but just what else, what, what are the many, many things that you enjoy about the holiday? Mm -hmm. And let that take more of the focus to let that take center stage instead of just getting so wrapped up in the mental gymnastics involved around the foods that we should or shouldn't be eating. <laughs> I didn't try to. I don't want to know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm just trying to banish the like good time, Tracy, <laughs> on my mind right now. For your information, what thought was in my head as I said that was the thoughts of my used to be neighbors before we moved, and their gigantic, um, oh yeah, haunted house they did, yeah, and how many adults went all out in their costumes, and it yeah. was very, it was okay. Adult fun, but not in the, you know, not sticks. Oh, know, but okay. It's just very, this is not anything you want kids around because it's mm -hmm. too terrifying. My kids wouldn't even walk past their house because yeah. it's so scary. Um, but that's grown up fun. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the grown ups grown up fun. have their grown up fun. Yes, grown up fun. <laughs> okay. So, two levels. If you want to just, you know, white knuckle it and get through, there are, there are, don't buy it. Right. Yeah. Don't buy it. Buy it late. Set a limit if you're going to. Only hand it out going to the buy it. Um and then I I if you have a problem with candy, I don't care how good the deals are the day after Halloween. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. You're kidding yourself. You think, oh, but it's only half as much as it usually is. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's still the same much as it's just still the same much guilt that you're gonna feel yeah. when you're eating it. It's still this gonna do the same, same exact thing to your calories. Body. Right, so we're gonna do the same blood thing sugar, about yeah, all of the, all of that's exactly all the same. of the physical effects, all the mental yeah. effects. Is that really, really worth saving two dollars and fifty cents, or five dollars? This is really not worth that. So, be honest with yourself. Um, but then also, if you really want to get down to it and be just okay, there's the, you know, just slow down, give yourself permission, slow down, use as many of your senses as you can. Focus on what you love about the holiday besides the food. Um, listen to your body and look at your, just question, get curious about your attachments to the foods that you think you shouldn't be eating. So there we go. There's our Halloween yes. tips. So maybe Halloween's not quite so spooky and wise for you. Oh, here we go. Turn off the glasses now. <laughs> okay. That's me being... 
like getting curious. Okay. Oh, that's my curious. Okay. I that actually, should be curious. Okay. I actually don't need them. There's <laughs> lots of things I need in life, but I don't need glasses. So nice. I would have worn them, but I couldn't see. <laughs> so she saved them for the end. Anyway, nourish your soul and your body this holiday season, this Halloween yes. in particular, mm -hmm. and have a great time. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hey, it's Tracy. If this was helpful and you'd like more, follow me on Instagram at tlastel.nourishingbodyandsoul or on Facebook or YouTube at Nourishing Body and Soul or you can find my website at nourishingbodysoul.com. Okay, so this is embarrassing because I've always made fun of people who did this, but like and subscribe. <laughs> Turns out it's important. Well, it's only, it's, it's only, it's important because if you like what you're listening to and seeing and you want to find it again, it makes it easier for you to find it. And then also it makes it easier for other people to find it. Mm -hmm. So if you like us, like, 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 yeah. like us. Yeah. Like and yeah. Like put a ring on it. Like yeah. us. Yeah. Then like and subscribe and it'll make us easier to find. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishing Body and Soul, the podcast. Before we wrap up, we just want to remind you that the information we share in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended for medical advice. While we hope you find our discussions helpful, we strongly recommend that you seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider before making any changes to your diet, exercise routine, or any other aspect of your health. We also want to make it clear that the host, guests, and producers of this podcast are not responsible for any adverse effects or consequences that may result from the use of any information or suggestion discussed in this podcast. We care about your well-being, but we can't take responsibility for individual outcomes. By listening to this podcast, you agree to indemnify and hold harmless the host, guests, and producers of this podcast from and against any and all claims, damages, liabilities, costs, and expenses arising from your use of the information provided in this podcast. We're so grateful for your support and we hope you keep listening and learning with us. Thanks.